Welcome back to another video. A couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, I should say, by the time this video comes out, I did a review on the Juice Scrambler bike. It was a lot of fun, but I mentioned or teased at making a controller upgrade to make it even more fun. Now, I haven't put that on yet, but that's why we are here on this nice open stretch of road with our cone set up because I wanna see what's the performance like on the stock controller and get a couple of timed runs. Then we're gonna swap out to the upgraded controller so we can see what the difference is. So stay tuned, let's see how much of a difference this upgrade kit makes on this particular bike. Now just so you know what the parameters are for this test, I'm gonna have the bike turned into race mode, that's the top pedal assist setting, and that also allows the bike to go more than 20 miles an hour. So I have everything turned up all the way. I'm not gonna be pedaling as far as putting in pedaling input to go faster, but I am gonna be pedaling just to make sure that mode is giving me the full power. One, two, three, and go. So run number one was flat, almost a little downhill. I was definitely able to get up to top speed, which is about 28, 29 miles an hour. And now what we're gonna do is do an uphill run to see how the speed is different going uphill, both time-wise, and I'll try and let you know what the top speed is once I get to the top of the hill. Uh, same setting, same everything. I'm just gonna pedal lightly. I don't know if we're gonna get up to top speed, but we're gonna find out. So one, two, three, and go. Twenty-two. Oh, not quite twenty-two. I'm back in the shop. First thing I did was pull the battery off, plug it back in. That way it's charging. We want to get a full charge so our test rides are evenly matched. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace the motor controller, which is underneath the seat. And then we're also gonna replace the display because otherwise the dissimilar parts wouldn't be compatible. So we're gonna get a bigger center mounted, really nice color display that can be programmed along with separate buttons that mount on the handlebars as opposed to the smaller screen and display on the bike. And then this much bigger motor controller is going to install underneath the seat. So let me show you what it takes to first get these parts off so we can put these on. First thing to do to get to the controller is to pull off the seat. Now there are six 10 millimeter bolts that are underneath the seat. So for the sake of time, I've already removed those. Once those are removed, you can lift the seat off. And then to get the controller out, there's a small tray underneath the seat here. There's four nuts that hold that in, also 10 millimeter. And then you need an Allen wrench from the underneath side to get to those. So I've removed three of those already. I've just got one left. So if we pop this guy off. Now the controller tray is loose. So the next thing to do from here is to trim off all of the zip ties that are holding both the controller in and any of the cables that we're going to be replacing right now. So basically any of the connections right here and also down to the motor. Now that we have the controller loose, the zip ties are cut off enough to where we can access all of the plugs, we can unplug everything. So we have this guy with a bunch of pins. That's what I kind of refer to as the, the main wiring harness. This runs all the way up to the handlebars. There's nothing else you need to do right here. And then we unplug this guy. Some of these are a little bit stiff, but just keep working them back and forth. And the good thing is they are color coded and they're all different. So you're not gonna mix anything up. And then this is our battery connection. And then the motor cable is tucked right back in here. Just wiggle that guy. And now our old controller is completely disconnected and unplugged. Here's a difference between the stock controller that we just removed and the aftermarket controller prototype that I'm going to put on. If we look at the specs, this is a 12 amp controller, 25 amp maximum, whereas this is a 17 amp rated current, 35 amps maximum. Now we can't turn it all the way up and I'll explain that a little bit later, 
but for sure this is going to add some power. Uh, it is a little bit bigger physically, so it doesn't quite fit in the tray that we had earlier and that's okay we're going to go ahead and just bolt it right to the frame but here's what we're going to do is we're just going to take this it has all of the same plugs and just plug it right in first here's our battery plug now i don't have the battery installed so we don't have to worry about any sparking or jumping at the moment we have a red connector here and there's a little pin that lines these guys up so just make sure you're plugging it in the right way we have our three pin yellow connector here. And then we have the main wiring harness connector I mentioned. That one has the most pins. So this is the one you wanna be the most careful with as it's the most sensitive. Uh, there's a little notch on one end of this plug and another on this plug. Just make sure those guys are lined up nice and straight before you try and force these together. And finally, the last one is our motor plug. And this right here is the reason that we can't run the controller at the maximum of 35 amps because the motor that comes on the bike uses a smaller plug that if we actually ran 35 amps through this could potentially melt. So we're gonna use the programming on the screen to limit the current going through this just a little bit. I do have an idea for a way we could change this so you could upgrade the motor in the future if you wanted to but for the stock motor and the stock plug, we do have to limit the current a bit just to be on the safe side. And then the motor plug, to make sure that's lined up properly, there is a small little arrow right there. So make sure you have the arrow on this plug and the other both lined up before you push those two together. It's too tucked in there too much. Now, because the controller is bigger and it doesn't fit in the box, like I said, we're just gonna mount it directly to the frame. So we're gonna take a couple of the bolts that I removed and just put them through the holes that are on the controller and line it up with some of these holes on the frame. We can't line up all four. So I think what we're gonna do, at least for this prototype test, is just put a couple of bolts in and then we might just add a zip tie around the other support. And honestly, that should be plenty to hold this thing in place uh, for testing. I have the controller bolted on. We have those two bolts securely on right here. Honestly, that's enough to hold it on. Uh, but just to be safe, I went ahead and put a zip tie around the middle right here, and that's not going anywhere. You can see I can shake the controller, it moves the whole bike, this doesn't move at all. So all I need to do at this point on the controller is to take the cables that are bundled up. I'm just gonna zip tie those back in place on the frame. And then we have one more thing to do, which is to change out the screen, which is very simple. So let's go ahead and zip tie all this together. Now let's go ahead and remove the screen. I'm surprised to see that the screen has a tiny 1.5 millimeter sized bolt on it, uh, Allen head type bolt. So just be aware that you're gonna need a little tiny one of these to get the screen off. But there's two bolts underneath right there. There's one on each side. You just wanna loosen those two guys and then we should be able to pop this screen off of the handlebars. And then with the display loose, you have the connector right here, which you just unscrew and then pull out. Here's the new color display that we're gonna put on. We have a mount that we need to put onto the back of the display first. And you just position this guy right here. And then there's two countersunk two and a half millimeter bolts that we're gonna stick in there or the, the head is two and a half millimeters, I should say, so you have the right tool. This is plastic, so just firmly put these in or gently, you don't need to over tighten them. And then the display mounts directly to the handlebars. You just need to loosen these two bolts and nuts and then you can pop this over. We'll tighten that back down. The plug is the same as what came off. And then there's also a Phillips head screw that's on the buttons that we're gonna mount right about here. One thing I should mention on the switch is that the power button, if you know which way that orients, you wanna make sure it's facing the right way. Otherwise, if you press the down and up arrows, you could have them reversed. Uh, if you can't tell by the power button, just look at the cable and make sure that's towards the front of the bike. Last thing we need to do, electrically speaking anyways, I still gotta put the seat back on, but is plug this guy in. So just make sure you get those little notches lined up and then very carefully push those together. 
and then screw these back down. Now at this point, all you need to do is bolt your seat back on, we'll pop the battery back on, and we should be good to go. There's a little bit of programming on the screen, and we may have to get some settings right, but I have lots of videos on the settings, so I'm not gonna go into super detail about that. Uh, but this bike's almost ready to roll with the upgrade kit. So I have the bike all ready to go. We're set up in our same test spot. Cones are at the same spot. I have the power turned up on five on the assist level. So I've got it cranked up all the way, but I don't actually have the power turned up all the way. So on the advanced settings, you have a zero through 10, 10 being maximum power. I have it on a six. So it's gonna limit the power quite a bit, but like I said, we have that smaller motor plug, so we can't run it full throttle. You risk melting that plug. But we're gonna see how it does on these settings right now. I should have the speed and everything dialed in. Uh, let's see how fast it goes and how quickly it gets from this point to there. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna go in one, two, three, and go. Twenty nine, thirty miles an hour. First test on flat ground. It definitely felt like it took off quicker. Now speed readings on displays can always vary from one to another, um, but if we can trust them both, then it definitely topped out a little bit faster. I was getting right close to thirty one. It definitely hit thirty. Thirty one would have been right there. So it felt quicker off the line for sure. Top speed, maybe a little faster. I think that's where the timing will help us to know for sure. This is the uphill test. So I'm pretty confident we're gonna get a much faster speed here, but let's give it a shot. I'm gonna pay attention to the speed, the wattage, try and make a couple of comments on the way up, but let's see how it goes. One, two, three, and go. 20, about 22 miles an hour. So with a little bit of magic help from editing, we're gonna post what the times are right here. And I don't know what the actual difference was because as we're filming it, I haven't looked yet. But I want you guys to leave a comment below if you are interested in this type of upgrade, a bigger controller and bigger display for the juiced bikes. So, some of the controllers are similar between other models, so hopefully if we start with one, then we can start adapting things and make it compatible with other juiced bikes as well. But the Juice Scrambler is the number one bike I think I've had the requests for. And as far as the, the one problem we had earlier and something that I've heard other customers mention about the throttle kind of or the speed hesitating a little bit towards the top end of speed and kind of jumping around. That seems to have gone away completely. So thankfully that did resolve that issue, at least from the, the short runs and a little bit of riding around we've been doing so far. Thanks again for watching one of my videos. Once again, if you have a juiced bike and you want an upgrade, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave a comment and tell me that something that you want. If you have any other type of e-bike and you just want to stay tuned and you want to see upgrades possibly for whatever bike you have, then also make sure to hit that subscribe button and I hope to see you again for another video next week.